Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now, this is actually the 30th episode, I believe, in the series, and it's a doozy. We're building an airport, something I did on a stream recently, but the airport completely bugged out, grounding all flights and preventing any planes from flying into our map at all. So it required a redesign. So we're going to start off with a time lapse of the stream, pretty quick one, and then another time lapse right after that of what I did to kind of fix it, and then we're going to pick up right at the stage of going from a level 2 airport to a level 3 airport and add on to it just that little bit. So without further delay, let's just get right into it. Alright ladies and gentlemen, the first part of this time lapse is actually cut from the stream. This is where I was redesigning the airport after having already leveled it up. So, the idea of the stream generally was to work through the progression of the airport DLC, that means starting at level 1 with everything we had available to us, and then progressively unlocking all the other buildings and things that we could utilize such as medium aircraft and then large aircraft. So we had to work our way up t so that then we could build the proper airport which is what you're seeing now. Unfortunately in building that quote unquote proper airport, the big one, planes stopped flying and we never worked out why. I had this bug before I assume it's a bug or there's just something that's not giving me information about what I've done wrong so all the planes remain grounded, there's no planes in the sky, putting down any other airport doesn't work, deleting this airport completely and just using the default airport, the non-DLC one, doesn't work, it just completely kills airplanes forever, seemingly, to the save file, as, as it were. So the only way to fix it was to uh, effectively go back in the saves and build a bit of a simpler airport, but this time lapse here that you're watching now is going to showcase kind of what the vision was originally and then what's changed. It's not that drastic. I've tried to keep everything in that's still quote unquote relevant so you're not just seeing something that couldn't function effectively. Uh, so just to pick it up where we're looking at now, this is this uh, extra little kind of, I keep wanting to call it a terminal, but these are called concourses, right? It's a concourse that is the big walkable area inside the airport. So you're extending the concourse out and I knew that I wanted a sort of a public transport wing as it were. And that's the bus stop gone in there with all the separate like kind of lines for the buses. And that is then a train station. So the train station is locked to tier 3 of an airport. That's why I wanted to, you know, redesign the whole thing once we leveled it up. Because, you know, a train is a difficult thing to forward plan if you don't know how big the building is, for instance, which I didn't. Uh, unless you used other mods, I suppose, to unlock everything. Anyway, so now I'm pl placing in the airport stands. I think I was just starting off with either medium or small ones there. And then just adjusting the size of the whole thing. So something you'll see me doing a lot is moving everything using Anarchy or using Move It. And I suspect this is what caused the problem. I suspect. I, I'm guessing I broke the fl flight paths or just the navigation for pathfinding for planes uh, completely to the point where it couldn't fix itself. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I assume that's kind of what happened. I was doing a lot of like intricate kind of customization, moving things a little bit. Assuming, because I do it for everything else and it works, that it would work for this. But I'm guessing that's where I went wrong. Who knows though, it's, the, it's never actually fully pinpointed what it was. Anyway, so I've got this big hub building. I wanted to make use of the different things I'm given, just break it up. Um, I'm kind of modeling this airport off of London Gatwick. So people were kind of suggesting different airports to me. I was trying to keep it relatively simple because we just want one runway at first. And then in future, I might have a second runway for cargo. I don't really foresee needing two runways for passengers. You'd have an extremely busy airport if you, if you needed that. Uh, which, but you know, it's my first time doing it, so I really didn't know what to expect. We'll kind of see later in this episode. We do actually have a lot of traffic in terms of planes coming in. Um, anyway, so yeah, so just this kind of wraparound effect around the runway, in a way, on one side of it at least, where we have the concourse going all the way around, and then multiple small loops for the taxiways, right? So we've got our runway, main runway tarmac, and then we have all these taxiways that have to be one way. And the taxiways are what guide your planes around into their various parking bays and then back out to the runway. Now the parking bays, called stands in the game, have to connect to the concourse and they have to connect to these one-way taxiways, which makes it kind of a tricky logistical problem to work out little loops of how they can go around, park and pull back out and continue without like jamming up on top of each other. So we're pretty far ahead now. This is the kind of final look of the airport. And this is where I was looking around and I couldn't get any planes. Now I'd loaded after the stream to kind of mess around myself, doing a few different things. I tried to reset a few things to see if I could get it to work. And this is what you're seeing now. So this is after I had loaded in. I have helicopter depots and a few other things in there. And I think it looks 
pretty good. I was really happy with it, except for the broken land around it. Don't worry about that. So now, this is where I was starting off um, as of today of recording to get the final working airport working. So I loaded back beforehand and I used the move it mod to actually save and export the surrounding transport infrastructure that I made so that I could easily just put it back down and rebuild the airport as close to the original as possible but hopefully working. So it's a great feature if you've never used it before the move it tool has a little triangle symbol called the toolbox where you can then select whatever you're selecting and just say export and it saves it out to an external file and then you just click import on whatever save you're playing and you can bring things with you. Such a time saver for me because I'd spent so much time doing all this. I initially tried to actually copy and paste in the entire airport and I did try that, but it just didn't work. Uh, like it, you know, it worked as in placing it, but the planes never arrived again. So I just, there's obviously something wrong with the airport, but the bug was so crazy. As I mentioned, even when we deleted the airport, planes never returned. Uh, so it's just a weird one. Just don't know what's going on. Anyways, it, th that's why I'm assuming pathfinding or flight paths were just broken, bugged out, didn't know what to do. And I used TMPE to reset all flights, but again, it just didn't never fix itself, so right, not really sure. Anyways, so just fixing all the kind of transport structures around me. Someone also pointed out in the chat that you can use the node controller tool to set it to be a slope rather than flat. And you get a much more even incline and decline, a gradual slope as it were. Because I was using the slope tool from the network multi-tool mod and it wasn't really doing the same effect. So the basic infrastructure is there and some of the car parks and things that I'd built uh, just outside of the hotel are all there. Just none of the actual airport buildings. So we'll be building the airport from scratch because some people had theories that maybe deleting the airport at tier three and then getting some tier three buildings onto a level one airport was bugging it out. Don't know. There's many, many theories. We never figured it out. And we did go through a lot of testing, about two hours of different things, trying different saves, loading different things, building our own flight paths, all this stuff. Anyways, I appreciate the people trying to help though, because we were just, at least for me, I was just like really frustrated that I couldn't get it working. So anyways, I tried to do a lot less moving of different things here, but this one did end up working. So obviously I did anarchy or just a little bit of move it tool correctly, not on the airport, taxiways themselves but on everything around it really anyway so here we're building a much more angular concourse trying to again just avoid having those curves because it might offset the taxiways a little bit with the stands that connect into it so again just trying to cut down on any possibility that there's going to be these issues so i don't know what the problem was specifically so i'm just going to talk you through like what i think helped it so having more right angles using a lot less of the move it tool and a lot less anarchy obviously just trying to play it vanilla see if it just works seems to be the way to go obviously with this seems just a little bit finicky it could be also something to do with the map because i'm not seeing this as a widespread issue there's a few people that commented a similar thing but there's no solutions out there on the internet so at least that I could find, and we did have a good look around. So I assume it could be just also certain maybe workshop maps, maybe their flight paths are a little finicky, something like that. Anyways, uh, so being modeled loosely off of Gatwick, and here I am leveling it up, by the way. I just put down those two little cheap hotels while we're leveling it up. We have our uh, air traffic control tower being placed in there. A good view of the runway. Uh, but modeling it closely off Gatwick, or sim kind of off Gatwick, Gatwick has one runway. It's actually, I think they call themselves the busiest single runway in Europe for airports. And there is actually a second runway right next to it, but it's a redundancy. It's just there in case the first one breaks down or has some issue with it, you know? Um, and then everything is just taxiways all off of that. All these interlinking little roads that go around different ways. But they're not constrained by the rule that I am, which is everything has to be one way. At least I don't think so. Um, but it's kind of cool. So they have these big areas where there's all these planes parked. They have other areas where it's just big open grassy fields and all sorts of things. And then there's like little um, industry buildings and cargo buildings and stuff all around it. So it's kind of cool. And it's kind of built at a big sharp 90 degree right angle. Because a lot of people were saying like, oh, your runway, it should be parallel to the concourse. Don't know who made that rule or why that's a thing. But that's not a thing in the airport I'm loosely basing this off of. But this concourse will actually kind of wrap around parallel to it. It just has one side that will come off to the side. And I know the runway is a little close to the uh, the concourse there, but it, I, j I aimed it in that direction specifically because that's where the flight paths tend to go. But the planes still kind of do this harsh bank to the left. 
Anyways, we'll have a look at this in a bit more detail, but this is building out the more simplified version. We're now going to go through level 2 and progress it up to level 3. And it all seems to be working for now, so fingers crossed it stays that way. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Swords International Airport. Easy. No problems whatsoever. This isn't the fourth or perhaps even fifth iteration of this place. It wasn't broken for several hours on stream and then... 10 or so hours, me banging my head against the wall trying to figure it out. Effectively, what we've got here is a tier 2 airport. It's not quite done yet. We can still level it up and we get to see that process here in the playthrough, which is going to be fun. We can add back on the our own airline, our museum, and a few of our other amenities, including a train station. Because right now, we're just using a regular train station with our own passenger train just set up. Until we get the one that actually snaps into the concourse so these people can just easily move in. No problems. Wow, we have a lot of people. In fact, they're all wearing their jerseys because it's uh, match day really, really soon, actually. Which is actually causing us quite a lot of traffic issues. We'll talk to talk a little bit about that a little bit later as well. We mentioned it on the stream uh, as well. So, just to catch you up on this place. So, it is a compromised version of the airport that I had designed initially uh, to some extent. Although, it has room for expansion. Like I said, it's tier 2 right now. And when we get to tier 3, we'll build out the concourse a little further along this way with some longer airport stands. Sorry, some larger ones for the larger aircraft to then taxi out to the runway and come back in this way. So, simple. I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible so it can't break, okay? I've got ideas of how I can make it more interesting, more interesting looking, multiple runways, but let's just keep it simple because I'm gonna kill myself if it doesn't work again. But I'll be saving it all the way, so just to make sure if we ever have issues, we can always revert back to here and see what we did wrong. Uh, but I never really figured out what the problem was. But to go over the airport just very quickly, in fact, let's just turn back on the UI and we can get into things. Uh, effectively, we have three medium aircraft stands here, so our larger aircraft are going to be taking place there. And then we have all the small ones just at the front here, where the kind of initial part of the airport's built out. We have our radar tower on the side here with a nice view of the runway. A little bit close. I know. I get it. A little bit close, but it's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine because it works. But uh, let's take you through this journey. So we effectively have our... We have our trees, of course. Every single time, man. Uh, this could maybe be cleaned up, actually. But yeah, so we have our road that comes down this way, and the buses then split off into their own specific bus lane that then is a two-way lane that breaks off into a one-way, so they kind of loop around, and then they come back and go back out. And that's purely just to feed into the bus terminal here so they can get straight into the airport, go through security, hit the lounges on the opposite side of that, of course, and then straight out to their designated boarding area, right? So no problems there. Hopefully... Uh, in the actual main area, if you don't get the bus and you continue on with your personal vehicle, let's say, you come around this way, you enter into a one-way road that's at the front of the ultra-modern airport terminal, and you keep going through, and you can park at the long-stay car parks if you want, or you can go around to maybe some of these car parks as well, which are a bit cheaper, or perhaps you're heading into the hotel for a stay for some reason, your flight's been grounded, whatever the case might be. You've also got taxi stands on the opposite side of this little park for people to chill at and just for it to look nice. And then we have some services, just because this is so far away that it ultimately needs them. So we've got a little police, uh, well it's actually not that little, it's a high capacity police headquarters here. We also then have a fire station and a waste transfer facility. Now, this transfer facility might end up moving. I think as I build out the road further along this way, we could perhaps move it over there and do something like put our airline building here near the hotel or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. It just seems a bit weird to have the waste transfer facility there. For those who don't remember what this building does, it is a non-polluting way to gather garbage. So despite the look of the building with the chimney stacks and everything, it actually doesn't pollute the area around it. But it's a little bit of an eyesore, I would say, next to a hotel. So I'm kind of aware of that. But for the most part, it's just so that they can collect the garbage from here, which piles up really frequently, and then what they do is they deliver it all the way down to this building, which does not have easy road access at the moment. Again, on the stream, I did actually connect this up, or I think it was... Oh, it was actually probably after the stream, but anyway, I did connect it up, but that's been a, a save that's been reverted multiple times, so I'll have to do that again at some point. Anyways, the point is, it's a non-polluting way just to gather that garbage, send it off somewhere, and then we also have a local taxi depot of called it them to be the black taxi cabs, just so I can recognize where those are coming from. It would be ideal if they really just waited here and you could set them to sit in this designated area, but that's just unfortunately not the case. Uh, they're probably going to go off everywhere they're needed. 
Right, so, what do we got? 3,400 passengers out of 5,000 is what's needed, and we need a little bit more attractiveness, which will probably just slam down some of these aircraft or whatever, just to get the points. Once we have the points, we'll remove the one, these little cosmetics, effectively. Now, the idea on the stream was to actually put down the helicopter depots somewhere in and around the airfield itself, which is cool, but it needs road access. So, what I was thinking is we could have a road that comes around here, and then it tunnels through to get into the central part of the airport and we'll put the air um the different various helicopter terminals in there so these are the ones like the fire helicopter depot the medical and then the police one as well and just the idea would be that you know it's an airfield i feel like you'd have helicopters or stuff landing there it's a little strange though because initially it was built when the airport wasn't working but those were working obviously and the place was crowded with helicopters so it's a little much maybe but I still think one or two would be good just to have in there. It kind of suits the theme, I guess, overall. But as you can see, the place is nice and busy. What do we have coming in? 50 passengers coming in on the small planes. The medium planes, I think, have 200. This is a medium here, I think. Yeah, up to 200. So 135 flying to Lost Cruise. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. So effectively, it's just, you know, some lounges and some... I keep calling them terminals, but they're stands, individual stands for people to board onto their planes. We have some warehouses out here, which aren't really used. They're just cosmetics, effectively, but they do need water and things. But they improve the attractiveness of the airport, and then we have, like, aviation fuel stations and stuff. So it's a bit of a maintenance area, I guess, there. And that's what we're just going to fill this out with in the center until we level it up. So there we go, 50-50, outgoing, outgoing and incoming. All good, I guess. It's fairly expensive to run this thing, 12,000. Um, but we're using 67% of the seats available with all the different stands we have. So I guess that's kind of an indication of are you filling the place up too much or not. But just give it some time and we'll be there in no, t you know, we'll be there in no time. 1,500 population is what's needed to travel. And we're seeing batches of basically 100 fly off every time on the average, I would say. So it's no time at all. Now, in the meantime, we have now a train. This train here, it's a red train. It's the... Oh, apparently it doesn't have the name anymore, but we can rename that. Let's, I, I think you could probably do it where I was in that screen, but just to be safe, we'll head into here, because I thought that's what you named the actual train. Yeah, let's call this the the Airport Express. Call it red. So I live near Gatwick Airport in London, uh, London Gatwick Airport, and you have the red train that goes there that's just called the Gatwick Express. So just inspired by that, we don't have a fancy name for our airport, it's just Swords International Airport, so it's the Swords International Airport Express, I guess. Uh, and that's taking a nice, healthy 227 people back out towards uh, the central station. Now, I was thinking of adding a second train that could go out towards the suburbs, but I guess this is kind of a train that goes you, brings you into the center of the city, and you can get any train there out to wherever you want to go, including other cities. So, I feel like that one connection there is probably enough. Whereas the buses will take you to different places. So at the moment, we have a bus route that takes you to the intercity bus terminal that's again next to the central station. And then there's another bus route that's going to take you further down into the Victoria area, the old commercial center of the suburbs. Now, as you can see, there's trees everywhere here. So let's just take the time to clear some of these. Because I don't think they'd be on top of a train line like that. Just a little clear of the line there. And probably just clear all these, to be honest. Now, you can see we got a lot of traffic. Traffic was kind of building up on the stream that we noticed a little bit, but not too excessive. But it seems to be kind of getting worse as the population is just climbing. So effectively, I've zoned a little bit of an extra area here. That's the only thing you wouldn't have seen. This area here is high-density residential. It's no longer just the wall-to-wall -wall residential. It's in its own separate area, so now we can see the towers are effectively rising higher. Now, the reason I wanted to do that and I needed more population is because we're actually losing workers uh, in some of our lower educated tiers. So in our factories, for instance, we can see 61 out of 90. We're not filling the uneducated tiers and we actually have too many highly educated. So because I've been letting a lot of time play in between episodes and when I'm doing various different things, a lot of people have gone to university and they've come out looking for jobs and uh, various office blocks are getting filled. We've now only got two abandoned and one that's just become abandoned. So three abandoned in total. But you know, all of these were all abandoned before, but they're all filling up now slowly. Like these ones. So up to 1,200 workers. So obviously this is why. There's still 300 jobs available. So all the high educated people are trying to take those ones. And as time progresses, it just feels like we need more and more people to fill just the zoning that we have and the factories that we have without even piling on more. I want to get into 
the fishing industry as well. I've been planning to do that out around here. So all these things basically means we just need more and more people. And the reason for so much traffic, by the way, in this area, there's two reasons, really. We have our cargo terminal here, which you can see a train is just loading and unloading now. Unloading, really. All these vans are going to pile out, including all these hearses, because we've got all the crematoriums here. And then we also have a park maintenance um, building with 10 vehicles in use, so vehicles are coming out of that one. We have the buses and then trains, which generate vehicles here as well. So it's, a, it's just a vehicle generation area, you know, they're just spawning vehicles constantly. Uh, and that's really, and I knew it would. I, I, I kind of hoped I had designed it well enough that it would be handling it, but it's just, I wasn't expecting the volume of goods to come into the city here. It's just a constant influx of, of trucks coming in and out of this thing. And that's just causing, you know, big backups, especially when they block the junctions. It means I'd have to change the timings, and that slowed down and eventually backed up everything. And then, to cap it off, the match has just begun, right? Match day has started. We actually won the last two and then lost the last two. Sorry, we won two, then lost the last two. So, hoping for a win, boys. We've got free public transport on for that one. So hopefully we'll crack it. And uh, how many people were there? 731 out of 750, not bad. I'm open with the new airport. People can get in here nice and quick. I also went with the suggestion people recommended, which was adding some billboards at the back of certain shops and at the front of the stadium as well. The other thing that I was very surprised by is that these buildings seem to be generating vehicles as well. This is in the pedestrian area, let's not forget. And I, I frequently see vehicles spawning and then just coming onto this road. There we go. There's two right there. Because I guess it's the people that live in these buildings once they come out to the edge or something. They seem to produce a vehicle, pull it out of their pocket, and then they're clogging up the traffic on a very busy junction. Uh, I wouldn't mind if they did it somewhere further down. This is a big pedestrian area, but that seems to be a hot spot of where they want to do it. So, again, these these are kind of unforeseen, unforeseeable factors for me because I just didn't know that this could would have been a thing. Um, so we just have a lot of traffic here. Now, for the most part, it's free enough flowing. <laughs> I was going to say, like, during the stream I'd mentioned, it's free flowing to the point where once the traffic lights turn, you flush out everyone who is waiting. So it's not backing up beyond a second junction. Typically, right? Because this line here ends here. It's not backing up beyond to here. And once the lines turn again, this whole thing should flush. Flush right out. And uh, basically clear it. So what I mean by that is the vehicle that's at the furthest back should actually make the next green light. Typically that's been the case because they actually run for a long time. And that's probably why it looks like they're building up a lot. I think. Because I gave them quite long timings. Anyways, I just thought I should mention it. I'm not saying it's solved. I'm not even saying it's a massive problem. Things. It's right at the tipping point where any more cars, and that is a serious problem. Because then you're starting backing up the next junction. That's how you get a gridlock. We're not gridlocked yet. We're just very, very busy. So we'll wait. This game will be over. Traffic will die down when match day is over. And I think, I think I'm right at the threshold where it's about as busy as it can get. Anyway, what I was failing to mention here is we've got a very high demand for residential so let's build some more residential I was going to use this last little block here to fill it out and then after that I'm not too sure what we're going to build out here I did think that this is going to be a kind of a leisure district although people are starting to warn me like oh the leisure buildings are really tall don't know if it's going to fit the area so we'll just see how it goes if it doesn't go that well then screw the leisure aspect of it we'll just make it like regular commerce and other things and then have um tourism and stuff out this way for the ferries and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that'll be okay. I'm, I'm trying to think about how much pressure we're continuing to pile on this area. I don't know. <laughs> I think we can handle just a little more out the front here because it's more just this road that's getting really busy. But if they're coming in via the cargo terminal, for instance, for shops and things, and they just come around this side, that should be okay. So we'll see. Um, but it's kind of tempting. I'm just, I'm just wondering, should this road start here instead? I don't know. So it would be like, we grab this, bring that one just for instance, even just out to here, just for the moment. So we have a more regular junction now. And would that be a better one to here? So it, it, they have to have a tram road, because the trams go into the depot, or they come out of the depot. Although I guess not that frequently, thinking about it. They run all day, don't they? We don't have the different day and night ones. So in theory, they don't really go back in there. It's just new ones roll out. So that might be smarter, I think. Maybe to use this area. I think I'm going to go with it. Just talking out loud, really. I haven't done any forward planning because it just all my time was taking with that uh, that airport. It was rough. Now, I don't want to be super boring. Let's see if we can curve this just a little bit. Uh, let's go to about there and then see a nice general curve into that area. Now, that's the tram road. We're going to cut this road here 
There's actually a stop there. I suppose let's move the stop first. I've kind of learned to do that. Oh, that's, is that... No, nope, that's Metro. We want to grab our trams. There we go. So yeah, let's just move that stop temporarily just to there. And there's no other stop on this road. So I think if we get this one and just bring it straight down to here. Oh yeah, tell you what. We will be a little bit grid-like just to join that area up, but then after that we can curve the road. So let's just go straight up to about there and then we can grid, um, curve it. Okay, better. I know it's a little bit dark, by the way, so just bear with me. All right. So, this will need to be a tram road as well. And we'll just clean up the nodes and the junctions. That's okay, I think. So yeah, the lines cut across and then you just pull in if you want to go. I guess that's fine, right? I don't see the issue with that. Except for this, um, but they'll, they'll find, their, find their way, I have no doubt. So this will be the last of the pedestrian area, really, that I'd planned. And then over here, somewhere I want to have a campus DLC. And then further out, I kind of wanted to have a zoo. So those are the two kind of DLCs I haven't really made use of yet. Um, really the last two I want to kind of check out. Although with the campus, you can make multiple types of it. Remember, the university that we actually have isn't using a DLC. We just made a sort of campus area out of sports facilities to make it kind of look cool. Uh, right, I'm just brightening up the day now. Winding time back, 9 in the morning. And uh, yeah, let's just pave out some roads and try to make this place look nice. Now, it's high density. What's wrong with that? I don't know why that zoning is inaccessible. I moved a park a while ago from there, and that made it inaccessible, but it seems to have stuck here as well. Maybe I could just redo the road and it'd be okay. Yeah, that seems fine. All right. Um, so let's see if we can come down to about the halfway point. I guess I'll go all the way through with this one, and then this can go through the middle. The grid seems somewhat disjointed, but not completely abhorrent. Yeah, that's fine. And then, uh, well, it's, you know, it's it's fine. <laughs> I'd say it's good. It's fine. Go up. Ah, oh, man. Zoning issues. Once the zone breaks, it's so disappointing. Oh, hey, speaking of zones breaking, I was watching some City Skylines 2 footage from some of the creators out there that have it. Looks a little rough. A little bit rougher than I expected. Uh, now, I only watched City Planner Plays, watched his video, and then I quickly started watching Biffa, I think, Plays. Um, so you let me know if you think I'm off base with that, but I was like, wow, I know it's early, by the way, I, and it is early. It's actually two, basically two months earlier, a month and a half. Very surprising how early they decided to put it out there. But even so, I thought that was, I, I guess it just looks a little rougher than I was expecting. So I'm, 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 um, marginally concerned, I guess. But uh, I'm sure it'll be fine over time, but I'm just worried that the launch might be a little rough. Just trying to make out some uh, little pathways here that might be a bit interesting. But our grid is so off now. There we go. Try not to interrupt the ones that are working too much. Okay. Let's try something like that. These guys need a way out, I would say. Alright. Cool. It's a bit chaotic, a bit random. We can maybe redevelop it in the future. We're not totally happy. Now, I've been leaving the side a little bit clear because this is a very noise-polluting area. So I feel like this is just going to be something else on the side here. I'm not too sure what, though, yet. Uh, you could have more shops and things, but I think that would just completely overcrowd the area. Uh, especially this road. If anything, I would just leave it clear. Just leave it with some trees, a little path going through it, something like that. It would be totally nice. I'd be totally happy with as a buffer, especially for the sound pollution between the two areas. Right, we'll just let time play. Those vehicles will resort themselves out. And then the last thing would be moving that tram stop back to where it was. Yeah, somewhere there. People can just kind of get on easily from there. Eh, it's no difference. Uh, from the 
junction thing here. I guess it is a junction. All right, so it's high density living. Uh, do they have what they need for power and water? They will have power, but water? Uh, surprisingly, yes. Okay, cool. All right, a little bit grid-like and everything, but hopefully we'll get some extra nice big population out of here to fill up those uneducated jobs because they, of course, won't be educated at first. And I might leave them that way because this um, student... The student. This high school is at full student capacity, 1800. And the two elementary schools here, they have a little bit more capacity. So that's actually kind of perfect. Don't want them going to high school. Leave them. If they go to elementary school, that's fine. Uneducated and the low tier of education, that's all good. It's the two above it that I actually have too many of now. Although, am I right in thinking that? I think well-educated is actually a struggle as well. No. Yeah, no, I'm right with that. It's. I think it's okay. I, I know I've just checked one building there, but I think, generally speaking, that's okay. But I suppose we should know for sure. Yeah, so the... Yeah. Well, for this, actually, it's the first, second, and third tier are missing people. We're just missing people all over the place, so and we've got too many highly educated. So I guess we'll just have to see how it all shakes out, because unemployment's super low. It's pretty, pretty much as low as it can go. We just need more people to fill the jobs that are currently out there. So much as I want to expand and do more industries and stuff, we just don't have the people for it, surprisingly, with even with all the density that we have. You know, there's a couple hundred people in a lot of these buildings, and it's still not enough. And then there's even more. It's the offices that have really taken everyone away. Oh, I meant to mention, I never showed this, but um, kind of updated the park a little bit. So I got rid of the gray paving underneath and instead put in some trees just kind of quickly. But I think the area looks much better now for it. We could take a moment just to soak in some of the sights and sounds. And then, of course, the hotels, my dual Frankenstein hotels are working totally fine. Match day is on right now. People are loving it, although people are not loving the traffic that's everywhere. But they are loving... The brand new billboards that they get to watch as they're waiting for the uh, the traffic lights to turn green. So they're loving that. When they get going, they head down. All these people are looking to get across the, the football. And then out they go. Um, what else have I done that's different? Oh yeah, we added in that crematorium I talked about too. I needed to. We actually filled up uh, that cemetery over there. So that's emptying out right now. And I built a temporary cemetery here. And the new crematorium that is a modded, excuse me, uh, workshop building. Uh, great building. So it's called an advanced crematorium. So it has a basic cemetery at the back of it. And then this kind of advanced crematorium at, the, crematorium at the front. And it's got a little bit more capacity than a normal one as well. So it's pretty cool. And I think it looks really nice. The idea was to have it off on the river here somewhere. Although some people said something about bodies washing down to the river if there was like a cemetery there. Which I guess is a possibility. It could be really really dire way of looking at it. but I like to think they've thought of that and that won't happen so they should be fine yeah traffic is kind of clearing out now the tail is getting shorter so that's good uh, the other thing would be that this bridge has been changed to allow the trains to look a little bit smoother underneath it and the tracks to have a, like a more wide turn look a bit more natural um, but it has given us this kind of issue I need to maybe do a longer slope or something actually to smoothen that out in fact, we could just do that now. See how good it looks. So, you want to start sloping. So, you have to click the junction and then keep going all the way to maybe here. And then what we'll do is use the surface tool just to blend it by smoothening it out. I would say that that area is kind of a dangerous area. You'd want to have something in there for protection. Yeah, and that's obviously mental now. Yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe that needs to be just a, a smidge lower. We can do that a bit more manually. This kind of thing where I'd have to play with it for a while, I think, to figure that out. Sorry, I guess my Discord is on. I'll have to quit out of that or something. About there, maybe. That's a little bit better. Bring this up just to make it a little bit more even. Maybe bring this up as well. And the middle. So just raise that height. Overall, fairly level. It's a little little bit of an incline. Do bridges ever incline? I, I feel like they don't. <laughs> With good reason. I think having a little incline there after the bridge bit is actually okay, but yeah. 
Alright, something like that. Cover it up with some rocks and trees and it might look a little bit better, but it's just, we're t it's a tight squeeze, you know, to get that rail line underneath there, so close to the river. I'm not saying it's a good design, I'm just saying it is what it is. I'm giving you my reasoning for leaving it like that. Uh, the other thing is then that this little bridge was created on the highway, so we went back and forth with whether or not the highway should dip underneath the rail or it should raise over, and we ultimately made the executive decision, I made the executive decision to say it should raise over and create the tiniest little bridge just by very, very, very gradually sloping the land for like a mile out, and the same with on this side. That seems to have worked pretty well. Alright, we got multiple trains coming in. So this actually does allow intercity trains to arrive. So this is, yeah, this, oh no, this is just one of our own. So how many is on it? Four, okay, and what about this one? It looks like they've joined together. 156, good. And where are we at for leveling this thing up? Hey, we've just done it. So, what we need to do is just slam down some extra nice looking things and then we get our next level. Now, is this still operational? Yeah, we have planes moving. So, I'd like to see. Alright, we'll scroll along. Let's just pick... I'm just going to be lazy with it because these will probably be removed. Until we get the nicer buildings. So, we'll just throw in some of these other planes here. I'm not saying they're going to stay there, okay? I feel like I have to repeat myself on that a lot. I was saying all through that stream, this is temporary, right? This is temporary, this is temporary. This isn't going to be the way it is. And the people are like, dude, it's this is so unrealistic. I'm like, it's temporary. We're just leveling it up. But I do appreciate some people do just join and then they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> 820 out of 100. Uh, okay, another little temporary thing we can do is just slam in some lounges. They seem to do fairly well. If I could find them. Those are the small hangers. Are we using small hangers or big ones, actually? Oh, they're the small ones. Yeah, put in a big one there. And then some of these. So just pause it for... Oh, you can actually see people. Oh, that's cool. I've never really... Hey, we did it anyway. So we've just gotten our airline headquarters building, our cargo airport stuff, right? So there's lots of cargo stuff. Aviation museum and the airport train station. So we'll try to move that in now. It's the last thing to do for this place. So I don't need to place that in. All right, cool. So I'm going to just have to, unfortunately, build the airport off screen because it could just break at any moment and that would just cause me to have to reload. It would mess up all the recordings. So the plan, like I said, is to just build it out this way and the concourse to go further along there. I know it's a bit of a long walk, I guess, for some people. You know, they have those long escalators that can take you on the way. Is that what they're called? Escalators, even though they don't scale? You know, the ones that's just like fast walkways. Anyway, have some of those, get some people what they need, have some larger stands, and then that'll be pretty much it. Until, on the opposite side, we'll have this train diverge and go a different way into the cargo terminal, have a second runway facing a slightly different direction just to make it look kind of interesting, and the cargo can take off that way. Now, are the trains clear of this place? They actually are. We've got a lot of passengers waiting here, though. Uh, but we're going to have to remove this building. See you later. All right, we don't need this anymore, this little side road. Now they can just get straight in there, no problem. All right, so looking for the train station. And we have large large aircraft stands now. So that's the metro station, which is cool. Although it's elevated, which is really weird. Although I guess good for to have the option. And then the airport train station. All right. So the plan was just to slam it right in on the edge there. And then we can just adjust the rail to match that. By the way, the cost of this airport was about two million, but in the time to shuffle it around and get everything rebuilt, I built back up two million. Just thought that was kind of interesting. All right, so let's grab you, and we'll use our network multi-tool to go create curve, select this node, or this end, and this end. Nice seamless transition. Done. It's as easy as that. Now, for the train line that was there, I don't know if I can pick that node and move it. There we go. All right, so that's as, it's as easy as that? <laughs> Question mark? High-pitched voice. That should be that. These guys don't know where they are now. Yes. That's good. I know they're going through the building or whatever, but they're doing the right thing. Oh, there's a train right there. Cool. The building is on fire. Don't worry about that. Oh, by the way, the reason it's kind of foggier out here is because I'm very close to the edge of the map. 
So it's just naturally foggy out there. I can't really do anything about it. My god, my Discord. So hey, it's a good way to promote the Discord. Hash, not hashtag, HTTP colon slash slash www.discord.gg slash WDP. There you go. It's the full text search for you to get in there. Um, but yeah, I'm in there all the time posting. I was posting about the troubleshooting I was doing for City Skylines and I let people know if they're wondering where videos are and stuff sometimes. Uh, tried to, by the way, fix the flight paths. I don't want to touch flight paths. They're just going to fly whatever way they want. I've seen things about mods trying to fix that, so planes actually just stay the direction they're going. Like, they don't, this plane is aiming for somewhere over here. It could have easily made a much nicer, smooth turn. We got a fl God, we got, like, attack planes coming in here. Um, but they just won't... They refuse to do that, so... You know, I'm at my wit's end with these airports, so it's as good as I can make it look, basically, without messing up everything by building in my own custom flight paths. All right. Um, so what else did we unlock? Oh, yeah, the Aviation Museum. Let's put that in. So I was thinking just somewhere around on this side at the back of the hotel. It might be nice to put in there if we do decide to move that waste transfer. It seems like that would be a good place for it, actually, because as you're driving in, I'll show you the look of this building. It's quite a nice-looking building. There it is. Uh, yeah, as you're coming in, you know, you get to see all these different types of planes and stuff. So super nice to have on the edge there. Even just even here would be kind of cool. Um, would it fit in there? Nah, it's probably too big. So at the back of the hotel or on the side as you're coming in, I think it'd be a nice view for people as they move in or come into the airport. So let's see what that looks like. And just get rid of some of the power lines here for a moment. This is a one-way road, though, so the only way to get to it would be to circle around, which may not be the smartest thing if you're congesting up that area a bit too much. But it is a nice, it's a looker, I think. It's a nice looking building. It is a bit weird the way there's a plane like just merged into the wall there. But I guess that is the way it is. But yeah, I think that's kind of cool as you're driving in, you see this kind of thing here. And we could do more maybe out this way, perhaps. It's either that or move it further back. By the way, I have a cemetery over there because the car parks kept saying that there was dead people and no one was picking them up, so I just built one over there. Super weird, but I felt I had to. I don't know why people weren't picking them up. Or it could just be, again, the death care is just really overloaded. Uh, so what else did we get? So we now have the airline headquarters building. So this is my own personal airline that we can manage. You, I could have put that there maybe instead. Maybe that would look better. Let's just see. Let's test something out. So if this was on the side, perhaps, and our headquarters building fit in there, would that make a bit more sense? As you're coming in, you kind of don't get to see the full nice view of it. You let me know what you think. I'm leaning the other way, but I'm not, not completely sold either way. Uh, but like I said, I think the road's going to probably go up here a bit further, and maybe you could even have the headquarters there. Uh, so let's check this out. So airline info. Chirp Air. I'm going to call it Schlong Air. Schlong Air. And that's after my Anno 1800 series, where we played as Hans von Schlong, of course. Uh, we'll color it the Watt Darren Plays Blue. If I could have my own design of this, I would largely just have like a white plane, but then I would have like the blue and yellow flare at the back or something. That would be if I could design it completely myself. But I cannot. Unless we use mods, maybe. Uh, ticket price. Higher prices increase your income, but also make the airport less attractive. Let's uh, be a little bit of a budget. A budget airline, but not completely budget. <laughs> All right. What are our policies? What are our options here? Hotel discounts. Bonus of 200 points to the attractiveness rating. Cost 20 per passenger per week. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Adds la 20 per passenger per week is a lot, though, actually. But uh, great maintenance. Land value bonus to the whole airport. That could actually be good for having our own hotel here. And then car rentals. Tourists are much more, more likely to use cars. No, I don't want them to do that. We want them to use the buses in the airport. Or the uh, train. All right. More and more people are using our airport, though. It's good. Only 24% unused seats. Wait. Oh, my God. I'm reading it the wrong way around. 76% of our seats weren't being aren't being used right now? Yikes. That's not good. 
Well, I guess we don't need to add on the bigger planes just yet. Maybe we have to just try to make it more and more attractive and overload it. So what is our attractiveness rating now? It's 1,323 out of 1,000. I'm assuming the more attractiveness you have, the more people use it, right? Is that, I'm assuming that's how it works. <laughs> it de determines how many tourists w the airport will attract. Okay, is that the same as what might, like, what overall, is that the attractiveness of almost the city? Like people arriving via plane? Or is it just people visiting the airport to see it? <laughs> I'd assume it's via plane. That would make sense for the DLC anyway. Hey, look, it's almost, it's almost like Aer Lingus. 18 people. Man, that is an empty flight. My brother works for an airline. He, well, he works for Aer Lingus and uh, the Irish airline. And my parents basically fly standby, but a lot of the time. But they were meant to come over and they couldn't because these, um, the planes have just been like super full lately. And they were going to fly from Spain. It was a last minute decision. Sometimes they book flights or whatever, but it was kind of a last minute thing. They were like, oh, we'll just fly standby. They went to the airport and they just couldn't get a flight the whole day. I was like, man has its drawbacks, I guess, if you're just waiting. But a plane like this, you could just be... I mean, you talk about having a whole aisle to yourself. You have several rows to yourself. These planes are up each other's butts. Is that Schlong Air? Looks like it is. Schlong Air. All right, we never saw that. We never saw that either. All right, let's see how many people get onto Schlong Air, if at all. Speed of time. Oh, a bunch of people got out, actually. That's good. wonder do we have any of the bigger planes, too. Are there any games where you manage an airline? So I went to college for game development, university, for four years. And our fourth year, one of our final projects, actually, was a building an airport game. Making, obviously making the game. And the game was like a sort of a prison architect where you make an airport. It's funny, actually, because there's a game like that now on Steam. This was back in 2014, so a long time ago. And uh, that was, it was quite a fun idea. We only had to make it in two weeks. So, you know, it's so, so annoying in college, really. It's like some of the ideas you come up with can be quite fun to pursue, but you just you've such a short window with everything, you can't develop them, really. Oh, this one's full. Much long air as well. Um, but anyway, long story short, you know, it was cool. Like, one of, I was actually the project lead on that. It was pretty cool. We had people, that was the first time we had teams, right? So, you had teams of eight people. Our class was really small. We only had 30 people in the class. And by year four, we were down to like 18. Most people didn't make it. <laughs> Most people <laughs> that I was friends with just played World of Warcraft all day and didn't really uh, go to class that much. Shout out to, um, well, you know who you are if, you, if you're watching. Anyway. So, we had international students join us, and uh, they were from Sweden, some from Germany, and some from Austria. And we had two from each country. So two from Ireland, two from all the other ones I just mentioned, for a team of eight. And they nominated me to be the group leader after the first day, which was one of my f finest moments. <laughs> so I was kind of the producer managing like what everyone was doing, and doing the overall design, rather than doing any of the coding, which is probably what I excel at. I'm not a very good coder. I'm okay. I'm, I'm not great. Now I'm definitely not good. It's been too long. Anyways, the, where this is all going is just basically one of the ideas that I had was, you know, dealing with like security and like how you'd actually like vet. I wanted to add in like little police guys because I was inspired by Prison Architect where it's like, okay, well, what if people can sneak in things on the flights? And it would just, we couldn't do anything crazy with it, but it would just tell you like, oh, people got through, you know, your uh, system. So you'd have to place in metal detectors and stuff like that. And then it was just a, it was such a struggle to even get um, the coding working for planes like T exactly what we have issues with here. Pathfind to get onto the runway and take off correctly. It was really messy because you could build it any way in any direction. So it was, it was a tough problem to solve in two weeks um, without any money behind me. But yeah. Anyway, just a little game dev story for you. Some of the other ones that we developed back then. I'm just waiting for things to grow, by the way. Some of the other... Oh yeah, did we win? We did. Hey, we won. So the game's over now. But yeah, one of the other games that I came up with at the time, I came up with two. I have a third one that's awesome, but I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> I want to make it one day. It's a really good idea, I think so anyway. And a couple people that know it say it's good. So I feel like I'm not crazy, but I'm terrified someone's going to do it first. And no one's done it in like seven years. So I'm like, is it just a terrible idea or has no one thought of this? It's an actual original idea that I can't find out there. There's a game that's kind of getting close that came out not too long ago, but... They didn't really, not really. Anyway, 
I know I'm being very vague. Hate to be vague. But I'll tell you the two that I did come up with that I thought were cool. One was just like an ant colony war game, which also has since been a game that came out was kickstarted Empires of the Undergrowth. My friends messaged me that game when it got successfully kickstarted. They were like, oh, it's like your ant game. But that's like a 3D game. Mine was 2D and it was kind of like worms. So you know the way you have worms? You've got several worms and you can kind of chunk away territory. So it's almost like there's a PNG image of territory and a bazooka goes off and hits a spot and then you have this big circle gap of emptiness that's now, you know, you can collide with and your worms can traverse and stuff like that. So I loved, I obviously, I liked worms and one of the games I wanted to make was like ants. So using that sort of technology, if you want to call it that, that idea that you can kind of have this map that you can erode away the idea was that you have a queen on one side, so on one side of the map you've got this queen, and on the other side of the map you've got a queen uh, of the enemy. And the goal is to kind of find the other queen, and there's like several resources out in the middle of the map. So remember, it's a 2D game, it's kind of like Worms, it's a basic game. So you have this queen pumping out ants constantly, it's just a, like a Starcraft-esque Zerg type thing. Little ants are constantly being pumped out, and then you have to give them orders of where to go. And then you say, okay, like, hey, like right-click to dig to this location. And they kind of dig and pathfind the, the way, and there'd be some rocks, so it's like undiggable areas, right? They can't get through there. The whole map is basically like a layer of mud that they can kind of traverse through and get to. Uh, and then there'd be these resources around. So there'd be like a chunk of an apple, <laughs> like in the ground or something. And if you told them to go click to go, go, go there, then they go there and they bring it back. So there's this like constant supply line back and forth. Cause it's like, I think it was like 50 ants usually like going between any one resource. And they're just like little specks basically. Uh, so you know that you're, you're, you can see the apple. It's like coming back to your base. Your queen is getting bigger and she's pumping out more quicker. And then remember, we have to make these games in like two weeks. So there's not that much thought behind it. But then you'd have like the basic worker ant, right? That does the digging. You'd have the soldier ant that does the combat. And there was one other one that I can't quite remember. It's like the Pathfinder, I think. And um, yeah, it was just a, a fun game because you could play it. You could kind of play it multiplayer, local multiplayer, let's call it, not over the internet. You just play it with two. Um, you could play it on the same keyboard, basically, just in the college labs. And I found it really fun. It just, obviously, it was my game, but it, a lot of people were playing it and thought it was kind of fun. It's like, oh, this is a cool, neat idea that if you had more time, you could see lots of potential possibilities with it. Just because ants. Are incredible. You've got like fire ants, you've got ants that interlock their arms and create bridges and stuff. You could do so much with ants. Anyway, thank you for listening because it was such a diatribe. But uh, yeah, I just I miss those days of doing um, those little mini games and college projects and stuff. I just do not have the time for it now. I can't even get videos out five times a week, let alone build a game on the side. But I really, really want to make a game in the future at some stage if I get some time. Problem is, I don't have really any connections to people anymore that, that do that kind of thing. I've got one connection, but he's quite busy at the moment, um, who would be kind of up for it. But I'd love to, there's, like I said, a game idea that I have that I thought I would do as a second game, but I actually think it would be better to just put your best foot forward and try to do it on the first go, just because it is unique. Um, but it would be difficult, you know. Game dev is time-consuming at the very least and quite challenging at the very most. Now... We're losing electricity, and we still have a shortage of workers. So, this will be the last thing I think I do for this episode, because it's hard to tell how long it's gone on with all the issues. I'm going to build extra power plant. I did, actually, during the stream, build a ge geothermal power plant. I actually put it down without even saying anything, just because I saw the issues. So, that's just kind of haphazardly thrown down. I was thinking of this other thing that I saw that I'd never used before. Well, not nuclear, but that would be good to build a nuclear power plant. Although, I don't know what I'll do with it to make it look cool or anything. The airport fence is actually pretty cool, but this one, the Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion Plant. Changes in water temperature allow the plant to generate electricity. Place it on the shoreline. So I was thinking we just place one or two of these right out here on the edge. Maybe three. Don't know if it looks weird having multiple. Because I guess they are like little platforms or whatever, but I think they're kind of cool. Uh, and then they need their own road. That's good that that works as a road. Is that alright? I think it's fine. Okay, so you need... Ironically, they need water. Um, so if people want to know what the other game idea was, not the, the secret one, but I did mention there was two I made in college. Well, there's the airport one and the ant one. 
And there's one other one. If you want me to talk about it, I'll talk about it in the next game. Or in the next uh, video. I'll try to keep it brief, though. You know, five minutes. Uh, right, how's our energy after that? Boom. Super good. Actually, I didn't even look at how much they make. 480? What? That seems massive. The oil plant makes 120. And each of these makes 480. Whoa. I guess the upkeep is quite significant. So we just put down 18,000 in terms of upkeep. So that's fair enough. Solar updraft tower. The warmth generated by the sunlight is what powers this power plant. And then the geothermal power plant, which you put down. So that's fairly cheap, but doesn't actually give you that much. And then the nuclear power gives you a lot. 640 for 8,000 a week. Solar power plant would be kind of cool to have. But it's... Oh, it has batteries, so it contributes to electricity production even during the night. That's good. I was going to say, a variable electricity rate would be kind of annoying in this game. If you don't have a way of backing it up. It's quite a cool building. I think it adds to the industrial look of the area. Again, though, I kind of wish this platform just, like, extended to the others so that we could, you know, it just looks like one big thing. It's the kind of issue I have down here, right? It's like, this could all be one thing. Um, that fairy pier might move and we do have fairies there yeah so i think in the next episode we're just gonna get to work on the fishing docks and we'll just continue to expand out the airport where it makes sense especially as we have a demand for more passengers right now it just doesn't seem like we do a lot of people incoming the attraction score is decent but i feel like yeah maybe we just need to build this out add more and more attractiveness to the area and really get like a high population coming in how many people are on this train this is a oh this is one of the ones that just delivered people in here we need to find one of our own this one. No, this isn't one of mine either. This is another outside connection. Now, I assume the people getting out here are going into the airport. Oh no, some of them aren't. You know what? Should we turn off allowing intercity trains here? I don't know, because they're obviously just waiting to get on our regular train. I kind of wanted people just to use this for the airport. It seems like people are using this just to get to the central line. I'd much rather the inner city trains just... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to turn off inner city. Because if people are wanting to go on the air from outside our map, wanting to fly, they can take the inner city train into the central and take our train back out. We don't need them going in there and then hopping on our train. That's just clogging up people unnecessarily, I feel like. Because if you want to get to the heart of the city, that's fine. You can do that. And if you want to get on the... Uh, plane, then you can go to the heart of the city and come back out. Too many people wait waiting there. Not that many. Now, do we get any info about our specific airline? Not really. That seems like a bit of a gimmick. <laughs> it's nice being able to do that, but it would have been kind of cool. It's it, It's nice. But it's always like tempting to be like, oh, couldn't you have done more with that then? If you're going to give me the ability to make an airline, it would almost be nice to pay to buy planes or something, to add them to the fleet, something like that. But yeah, it just says tourists and visitors, 68 and 63. Okay. The upkeep is 1920. Like, how can I justify it? <laughs> All I can do is control price. Oh my god. Get out of there, man, quickly. The entire stand is on fire. How many of them are on there? 200 passengers getting out of here. Alright, we'll watch this last plane take off and then that'll be it for today. And yeah, I'll clear this area of these. Try to make this place look a little bit more interesting um, without breaking it. That's basically the goal. That's uh, we'll switch over to Schlong Airlines, Schlong Air. Oh no, it's just pulling in actually, damn. These guys are boarding, so I'm guessing they're gonna be taken off soon. They've got a private jet. That's oh, taking too long, let's just go back to the old one. Where are you heading to? Doesn't say yet, just taxiing. Most planes that take off here tend to just do a harsh bank to the right. Hey, our fire helicopters are in putting that fire out, though, which is nice. Wow, yeah, place is getting busy. It is getting busy. People are coming in all the time. 
circling around before they kind of come down. Oh my god, careful. <laughs> I feel like you didn't quite get the speed you needed there, to be honest. Well, we did it. We have planes taking off from our airport, and that's all that matters. Uh, so yeah, if you've got suggestions for the airport, let me know. I'm fairly happy with the overall layout, but I do think there's something about the waste transfer facility being there I'm just not sold about. And you can see, even with the police station and this thing right here, we're still getting garbage and crime. Don't know why. It just seems to be a constant thing. And it, it, it has to go red before they'll decide to bother to actually fix it. Um, but yeah, the concourse is then going to angle straight this way. So it's not going to go any further out that way. It's just going to angle straight parallel with this, this taxiway. And then we're just going to have a series of large planes that are then going to be able to just taxi straight out this way without clogging up any of the problems here. Uh, some extra lounges, I would imagine, and that'll kind of be it. We have our big car parks. These aren't being filled just yet, and we have our hotel. It'd be nice to add in our own hotels, but unfortunately, there's nothing really around here that they would need in terms of, you know, our hotels need some commerce, some office space, maybe some nature, unique buildings. So the unique building one is kind of covered with our various things here. But other than that, they don't have anything else, so our DLC hotels don't really work at the airport. I, I noticed this happening as well, where stands get really busy, individual stands. It says active flights one, but this these guys are boarding. They're going to pull out, and this one's going to pull in and unload. But it's such a shame, because there's all these other ones free. It's a very strange system that they've done here. I don't quite get it. It's like they're reserved for a very long time in advance, and then that's going to be blocking everyone. Now... If, just really quickly while we're looking at it, because I did say if you've got any feedback, we do have multiple routes out of here, right? Oh, no, we don't, actually. Ah, so this could be... If this was a turn right kind of situation, maybe that would have been better. So this is like a little closed loop. And then I was going to make another kind of... This would be a closed loop here, but it'll come. I'm going to have another one that goes forward this way, snaps in and goes to the right. Not too close, obviously, but... Yeah. And I was thinking it could continue around to there, but this is getting busy already, then maybe not. Anyways, I digress. That's going to have to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and for bearing with my technical issues and my game dev stories. My sort of game dev stories. We are very close, by the way, to the Megalopolis. A number I've never hit in the game, ever. I don't think I've hit the last two numbers, to be honest. 75,000. And then it's just, we have everything. <laughs> the cargo airport hub, metropolitan airport, international airport stuff. So, yeah. Alright, that's going to have to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.